Welcome to this lesson on an intro to graphing quadratics. So let's go over a few vocabulary words. A parabola is the U-shaped graph of a quadratic function, and you see some of those below. It has this U shape. Roots are where the parabola crosses the x-axis. And other names for those are zeros or x-intercepts or solutions. And when we solve quadratics, we are finding the roots or the zeros. So we've learned how to solve. We were finding the roots or where that parabola crosses the x-axis. Quadratic functions can have three types of roots. So let's look at those below. The first one is two real roots. So that's when it crosses the x-axis two times. The second type is one real root, so that's where it just touches the x-axis one time. And then the third type is no real roots, and that's where it does not touch the x-axis. All right, so let's actually solve and show where these roots are. Of course, you can tell from the graph, but let's make the connection between solving for zeros and how they look on the graph. So the first one, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Let's try to factor that. So let's see. Factors of 3 are 3 and 1, so it's got to be 3 and 1. And we want a positive 2, so that means it's got to be positive 3 and negative 1. And then we can set both of those equal to 0. So that's going to be x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. And you see those here, negative 3 and 1. All right, the second one. All right, so factors of 9 that will add to give me 6. I can do positive 3 and positive 3. Okay, so set those equal to zero, and you notice they're the same thing, so you don't need to solve twice. Just solve one of them. You're going to get the same thing for both. And you notice you only get one root, negative three, which is what is shown on the graph. All right, and then the last one, let's use square roots to solve for this one because it's not a trinomial. So let's see, I can subtract three from both sides. And then I can take the square root of both sides. All right, right here you have the square root of a negative number. There's no real number that will give you a negative number when you multiply it by itself. So when you're taking the square root of a negative, that means there is no real solution. And as you can see, there is no real root. This quadratic function does not touch the x-axis, it's above it. Okay, so let's move on into standard form. So standard form is a quadratic function in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and we've seen many in that form already. And there's a few vocabulary words we need to go over when we're talking about standard form and graphing standard form. The first is the axis of symmetry, and that is a line that divides the parabola into two symmetrical halves. So anytime you have a parabola, it's going to be symmetrical, and there's going to be a line that will divide it right in half, and that's called the axis of symmetry. And you can find that using the formula negative b over 2a. The next is the vertex, and that is the point where the parabola crosses the axis of symmetry. It's also the maximum or minimum point of a parabola. So if I have a parabola, the vertex would be right here. Or if it's opening down, it would be up here. So the max or the min. If A is positive, if your A value is positive, the parabola is going to open up. And if A is negative, the parabola is going to open down. 
Okay, so let's try an example. So use the quadratic function and the graph to find the characteristics. So first domain, remember domain is my x values left and right. And as you can see, this parabola keeps going forever in this direction and forever in this direction. So it's going to have all x values or all real numbers. And then my range is up and down. Now below this line, it doesn't have any y values. But going up from this line, it does have y values and it's going to keep going up forever. So my range starts here at y equals, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. y equals negative 9. And it goes up from there. And it does touch at negative 9. If you can look at the graph again, it does touch here. So it's greater than or equal to negative 9. And then it goes up from there. And of course, if you want to write this in interval notation, your domain would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. And your range would be from negative 9 to infinity. And you use that bracket because it does include negative 9. It does touch there. Okay, the axis of symmetry. We can tell from the graph, it's right here. It's that line that's cutting it in half, which is x equals 1. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line, so it's going to be x equals the number. Remember, bucks, it's vertical, so it's going to be x equals, and it has an undefined slope. That's what that U stands for. But let's use the formula, too, and just prove it. So the formula, let's scroll back up, is negative b over 2a. So negative b, negative, negative 2 over 2 a, my a is 1. So negative, negative 2, that's a positive 2. 2 times 1, that's 2, which gives me 1. So if we didn't have the graph, we could still find the axis of symmetry. Okay, the vertex is down here, this point, which is 1, negative 9. The y-intercept looks like it's here. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0, negative 8. And then our zeros are where the graph touches the x-axis. So let me erase all this. So it would be here and here. So x equals negative 2 and positive 4. And we want to check this by solving. We've learned how to solve, so let's check. Let's factor this. So negative 8 and negative 2, let's see, I know 4 times 2 is going to give me 8 and 4 minus 2 will give me 2, but we need a negative 2, so the signs need to be like this, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, and then set both of those equal to 0, so x equals 4 and x equals negative 2, and that's exactly what the graph is showing. All right, let's continue on. Let's learn how to graph in standard form. So I'm giving you an equation here, and we want to graph it. So step one is to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So negative b over 2a, negative 4 over 2a is 1. So that will be negative 4 over 2 which is negative 2. So my axis of symmetry is going to be here at negative 2. Now to find the vertex, we already have the first part, negative 2. We just need to substitute that negative 2 into the equation for x. So I'm just taking this value and substituting it in for x, and that will give you the y-coordinate. So let's see. Negative 2 squared, that's 4. 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. Plus 3, that gives me negative 1. So my vertex is negative 2, negative 1. 
Go ahead and plot that. All right, step two, we're going to find the y-intercept by substituting 0 in for x. So 0 squared is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, so all we have left is 3. That means it's going to cross the y-axis at 3. All right, let's find our zeros next, our x-intercepts. So let's see if this will factor... So 3 and 1, and that does give me 4. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So setting those both equal to 0. So x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1. So go ahead and plot those. So negative 3 and negative 1. And then if you need more points to finish out your parabola, you can use an XY table. So let's see. Um, let's plug in negative 4 and just see what we get. It should be symmetrical, so it should be about right here. But let's make sure and plug it in. So negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 plus 3. So 16 minus 16, that's... 0 plus 3 is 3, so it does work out there. And that should be enough to determine your parabola. So step 5 is to sketch the parabola. And this opens up because it's positive 1. And you should also be able to tell that from your point. So there is my parabola. All right, let's try that again. So step one, find your axis of symmetry and your vertex. So negative b over 2a, or a is negative 1 in this case. So that would be 2. And then substitute 2 in for x to find the rest of the vertex. All right, so that's negative 4 plus 8. minus 3, so that's 4 minus 3, that's 1, so my vertex is 2, 1, and my axis of symmetry is at 2. All right, let's find the y-intercept by substituting in 0 for x. So that's 0, that's 0, so negative 3. Now you can use that to find the symmetrical point on the other side. So what I mean is we know that this has to be symmetrical about the axis of symmetry. So since this is 2 to the left, there should also be a point 2 to the right. And that will help you draw your parabola. All right, let's factor. First of all, I'm going to factor out that negative 1. just to make it a little bit easier on myself. So let's see, it's gotta be three and one, but we need to get to a negative four, which means both of those are gonna have to be negative. And you don't have to worry about that negative one once you factor it out because it doesn't have a variable. So you can just set these factors equal to zero. If you set negative one equal to zero, that's not gonna solve for any zeros for you. So you don't need that part. So x equals 3 and x equals 1. Let's go ahead and graph those. 3 and 1. And I don't think I need any other xy table points. So I'm going to skip step 4 and I'm just going to draw my parabola. And I know it opens down because it has a negative a. Okay, you can go ahead and stop the practice. Stop the, the video and complete your practice.